Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. All right, we're discussing stem cell therapy for autism in Mexico, and I put together a word cloud. Uh, I love word clouds, and we're going to go through all of these uh, when it comes to autism stem cell therapy. These are the most commonly asked questions we get uh, about the treatment um, are the things that you see here. All right, so let's begin. All right, first of all, the protocol. Uh, typically, we can do these treatments um, in either one or two days. Once in a blue moon, we go to three days. Um, that's usually not necessary. These centers that try to drag it out for a week or whatnot, I, I don't know what they're thinking. There's no evidence to back that up, okay? The studies that were done, I'll show you some later, did not drag it out that long. So I feel like it's more of a way to just generate more revenue, and I disagree with that. All right, so we usually do a combo of IV therapy and then also intrathecal, which is an, uh, basically a reverse spinal tap. Um, and the combination, I think, works exceptionally well. You can just do it IV. We have some parents who really are ambivalent about the injection into the back. I get it, uh, and that's fine. Um, several studies did that, and the results were good. But uh, I like the results to be great. So uh, that's why we do both, typically. Okay. Now, what's the source of our cells? Ours come from umbilical cord tissue obtained uh, from a consenting donor, uh, usually after a scheduled C-section, such as you see on the the left there. The baby's fine, the mom's fine, the umbilical cord usually gets discarded as medical waste, but uh, in this case, it's not. So we get the uh, umbilical cords uh, to our uh, partner lab in Mexico with um, on a saline bath, um, and then they use, uh, obtain the umbilical cord stem cells uh, and process them accordingly under GMP conditions. Cell type. So we use predominantly mesenchymal stem cells. Some people say mesenchymal. Um, and you can see on the left, you can get those from yourself, either your bone marrow or adipose tissue. We stopped doing that eight years ago. So for uh, children with autism, we use the umbilical cord stem cells. And as you can see, uh, MSCs have a lot of options of what they can turn into. All right, biologic safety. Uh, around the world, our safety testing is equivalent to what the USA FDA requires. So it's top notch. Um, we test for communicable diseases. We do sterility testing. Um, and all this goes into our certificate of analysis. Um, on the right side, you can see one from uh, Mexico. This is unfortunately in Spanish, but I'll go through the highlights. Uh, so basically, uh, you have 25 million uh, mes mesenchymal stem cells in this vial. Um, this was uh, from a few years ago. Um, and you have, I mean, they tell you, I don't know why, but the uh, sex and the uh, ethnicity of the baby. Um, and, and then where, uh, so for Wharton's jelly is where the stem cells come from. Uh, viability here is 86%. Um, they look at the doubling uh, population, the colony forming units basically, and they, have, they meet the criteria there. Um, they also test for MSC markers, which um, is indicative of uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Um, and they look at their differentiation possibilities <clears throat> that was approved. Uh, and then I cut this off, but you can see the sterility testing for bacteria, virus, fungus, <clears throat> mycoplasma, and they also look at endotoxin. So all of these um, <clears throat> are, have to be uh, passed before the vials get released. Okay, this is called a certificate of analysis. Any patient is welcome to, to see it. Patient safety and side effects. <clears throat> our equipment is first rate. Um, at some of our centers, we actually have the uh, full anesthesia machines. Uh, but anyway, we do typically do these procedures under conscious sedation. We want the children to be comfortable, uh, pain-free, and they don't, we don't want them to remember it, right? So in this case, uh, this is an older child with autism, and he's getting some gas before the procedure because he wouldn't even tolerate getting his IV. So we try to make the whole process uh, seamless and safe. 
Uh, we test all the vitals and oxygen saturation during the procedures. Side effects we've seen have been mild to moderate and temporary. Just as with all the major research studies out there, we've seen low-grade fever, we've seen nausea, headache, chills, some temporary lightheadedness, dizziness, maybe a little bit of itching, and for a week or two, uh, a temporary hyperactivity sometimes occurs. Can the stem cells form tumors? The stem cells that we use are from Wharton's jelly, and they do not induce tumors, as you see in the top headline there of the, of the research paper. The one on the bottom is another evaluation, tumorigenicity evaluation, and on the right was the conclusion Umbilical cord blood mesenchymal stem cells do not exhibit tumorigenic potential. They tested it in, in vitro and in vivo, uh, providing further evidence of their safety. Do they get rejected? Umbilical cord stem cells do not get rejected when they're either infused or injected or however they're applied. There are no MHC2 markers in the cord stem cells. Those are the ones that would spark up a rejection and they just don't exist. There's also no red blood cells, they get removed, so there's no need for cross-matching or typing. We published a paper last year, my research team and I, and we go through all of the clinical trials and papers that have been published, that good ones that have been published to date, um, and they uh, all talk about this um, and how safe and, and no tumors, no rejection. All right, exosomes. Uh, I put this slide in here because we get asked about them all the time, and um, we include them for pretty much all ASD treatments along with the stem cells. They're byproducts of umbilical cord stem cells. They're exceptionally helpful in cell-to-cell -cell communication. They're very effective in reducing inflammation. Um, the way they work is they circulate, uh, and then they get ingested by cells that have inflammation. And then they release their contents, which are the mediators of many stem cell associated therapeutic activities. They're very small. They don't care about getting stuck in the lungs or getting caught in the blood brain barrier so they can go wherever they're needed. All right, what research exists on stem cell therapy for ASD? Um, I'm just gonna go through a, a very, uh, a couple of very high level studies. This one was out of China, transplantation of human cord blood uh, mononuclear cells and cord-derived mesen mesenchymal stem cells for autism. So this is an open-label study uh, where both the participants, families, and the doctor knew what was being given. Um, 37 autistic subjects were enrolled. Uh, they received both cord blood and mesenchymal stem cells from cord tissue. No adverse events except low-grade fever. Now, they had significant changes, including enhanced eye contact, less emotional aggressive response, less hyperactivity. And at six months, the results were compared and they had considerably higher improvements maintained. So on our YouTube channel, R3 Stem Cell YouTube channel, if you type that in, you'll see a, a really nice success story from the Chima family. Their child is seven years old. He's gotten treatment twice so far, but he didn't speak at all before his first treatment. And now he speaks quite a bit, and he has all of the results that you saw before on, on the study from, from China. Better eye contact, better attention span, less hyperactivity, so on and so forth. So Duke University is well known for their autism studies. Um, they've done safety studies, which also looked at effectiveness, typically with kids between two and six. Um, and in this particular study I printed out here, they did IV only, no intrathecal. They did 10 to 50 million total nucleated cells per kilogram. Very high amount of cells. Not all of those are stem cells, but um, you know it does have a lot of exosomes and cytokines and growth factors along with the stem cells. So the researchers found it to be definitely safe. Uh, they showed a general improvement in the symptoms specific to autistic children, including speech and verbal and nonverbal socialization skills. So I wrote a stem cell therapy guide. It's available as a free download on our website at r3stemcell.com slash autism dash guide. Uh, go ahead and download that today. All right, pricing. Pricing depends on the cell counts. It's gonna vary. We uh, typically look between two to five million stem cells per kilogram for uh, 
autistic children uh, treatment. And that's going to come into, you know, the weight as well as the severity of the ASD uh, stage. Okay. So here's the pricing. Um, now, if 75 million stem cells is going to be the uh, recommendation, that's going to be 7,250 US dollars. We do include for free 25 billion exosomes along with the multivitamin and ground transportation. Uh, quick disclaimer, these prices are subject to change. Um, so anyway, 100 million stem cells is going to be 88.50 US dollars. Uh, 50 billion exosomes are included, two hotel nights, as well as a multivitamin and ground transportation as well. Um, everybody gets a multivitamin and ground transportation, so I'm just going to skip saying that, all right? 125 million stem cells is 10,800 US dollars, and that includes 50 billion exosomes. 150 million stem cells is 12,750 US dollars, and there are 75 billion exosomes, and that includes two free hotel nights. Uh, 200 million stem cells is $16,100, uh, 75 billion exosomes, and then two free hotel nights. We do have an option for all exosomes, and we can do 200 billion for 4,495. US dollars. Now all these prices are all inclusive except there is an extra fee for the anesthesiologist that you just <clears throat> pay to the anesthesiologist directly and it's uh, 500 US dollars currently. Okay. All right, so we offer a free consultation for um, autism uh, stem cell therapy. Uh, call us today at 844-GET-STEM. Visit us online at stemcellmexico.com. We'd be happy to talk about the options, whether or not your child is a candidate, um, and then make that recommendation. Um, I think you know we're one of the few companies that offers a lot of value um, and free consultations. Um, we've actually written research now. Um, we have treated hundreds of children around the world. We're in six countries, four, over 40 centers. We've done 24,000 stem cell procedures in the last decade. All right, thank you so much for watching.